We have the pleasure of having with us today Professor Jesper Boos Nielsen, Concordium's Chief Scientific Advisor. And we're going to be talking to Jesper to find out a little bit more about what kind of science goes into creating a layer one blockchain like Concordium. Hi, Jesper. Hi, happy to be here. You said before that you think that the blockchain space is built on sand. And I was a little bit like, what, what do you mean by that? And, um, and also, can a more scientific approach change all of that? Yes. I mean, for sure in the beginning, I mean, most of it was built on sand uh, and, and to a large mm -hmm. extent uh, still. And what I mean when I say that is it's being built by tinkering, kind of, if I can say that. I mean, and it's a great approach for some things. Like if I'm building a kite in the garden with my daughter, I mean, we try to put it together. We try to fly it. If it doesn't fly, we fix it a little bit. And at some point, you know, it flies. And a lot of stuff is built like that. It's also a great approach if I'm, you know, some hacker in the basement, I'm building my own little game. Huh? I build it, I put it out. Sometimes it breaks and I fix it. You know, no one gets hurt. Um, but if you're building a cryptographic system like a blockchain that is going to secure value for, of billions, worth billions of, of uh, US dollars, this is such a great approach, right? Because when, when stuff breaks, money actually disappears. And you can find these... Uh, you know, you can find these places on the internet keeping track of how much money got lost in the crypto space this year, huh? counting up. Last mm. year, it was something like uh, 20 billion US dollars. I mean, for me, wow. that's a lot of money. Um, <laughs> and and this, this year so far, it's 26 billion dollars. So it's going up. Huh? So we see more and more stuff apparently being built on sand. And the problem with the tinkering approach is you discover that stuff doesn't work by putting it into use and seeing it break. Huh? So you don't know really what you're doing and then you try it. What we do in the scientific approach is it's the other way around. We prove that stuff works before we put it out. And so it's very nerdy. So we take, you know, we, we try to specify in math, what should the system do? What kind of behavior is tolerated and what is not tolerated? And then we describe using math, what the system that we implemented is actually doing. Unfortunately, the code is already already kind of math, so we can take you know kind of that description of the system, and then we pay uh, prove using math. This system is behaving according to this specification. Money doesn't disappear. You know, down to last right. principle, QED done. And then we put it out, and we know it doesn't work. Um, yeah. This is extremely time consuming. It can take a year, and it did that, for example, with the sharding mechanism. With, with the finality uh, layer, it took uh, respectively two years and one year to do these proofs. Right? And of course, you're improving stuff under the way because you realize you make mistakes. But this, I mean, yes. you know, it takes five researchers at top universities to do it, so also a lot of money. But in the end, you know the system works. Right? Yes. And the, the, the problem with the tinkering approach is you add layer and layer. Sometimes you discover a box, some of them you don't discover, so they're still there. As you add complexity over the years, you're just piling up blocks. And at some point, yes. someday, when your blockchain is worth 100 billion US dollars, someone will, you know, find these blocks and then one day all the money is gone. And that's the sand, you know, yes. that's a rainy day. The foundation of the house is, is gone and you didn't realize it, that it was there. So that's a very, very dangerous approach. I mean, it's great for experimenting, yes. but at some point the crypto space had to move to in another direction, actually start proving that that stuff works. Unfortunately, we, we're seeing that now happening. We're seeing several big science-based projects in this, in this space. I mean, just to mention a few, like Concordium, also there's a project out there called Algorand, there's uh, Cardano, and we're also now seeing Ethereum beef up on science and starting to hire very serious uh, scientists. So people are starting to realize this is the way you do it. Right? Unfortunately, yes. we've been there for, for Concordium, been there since uh, 2017. So we have a few yeah. years on, on, on that trend. Thank you so much for your time today. I uh, really enjoyed this interview. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us on Crypto Channel Direct, powered by Concordium. Now, I hope that you've enjoyed the show for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe by hitting the button below. And we'll be back next week with news you need to know. Until then, I'm Claire Ross-Brown. See you next time.